If you're interested in web development, you've probably already heard the monolithic versus microservice debate. It's difficult to talk about web apps without this discussion arising. While you can create beautiful, functional applications with either option, it's important to look closely at the two so you can pick out the one that is right for your needs. Before I give my opinion on them and which one to use, I want to give a very basic definition for what a monolithic application is versus a microservice based one. Monolithic architecture is a setup used for traditional server side systems. The entire system's function is based on a single application. This type of system comes with various advantages. First, it is faster to develop. You can create an application with basic features and then scale it up over time. Monolithic apps can also be faster than microservice apps because they don't have to have the requirement of communicating via APIs. To give a visual on how a monolithic application works, we have something like this. You, we pretend that this big circle is an application, then we might have features like authentication, or if it's a blogging, a blogging application, we might have a concept of posts, and we'll have a database here, and we'll have a permission structure Right here, we might have a workflow approval. So we might have a workflow approval system for approving posts, all of that right here. And each one of these is in the same system. They'll all communicate with the same database. They'll be on the same server. So they'll all be on the same machine and they'll also use the same file system. So each one of these, so your database files might be right there, authentication, everything right there. If you're used to building Ruby on Rails applications, this might look very familiar to you because it's the way a Rails app is built by default, where you have one set of files and they all communicate with each other. When you want to build a new feature, you run a generator or you create more files and that's the way that you build a monolithic application. Now, this is fine, but it's also only one way that applications can be built. We also have the ability to create things called microservice applications. What a microservice is, is it is a architecture where every feature is its own application. So instead, you remember how we had the big circle and it was one app? Here, we might have authentication just being its own app. And then we have the idea of posts. Posts would be its own application. And then if we have a authorization or a, uh, an approval workflow, just like we had before, we have that approval workflow. And then you have each one of these and they're all separate entities. They each reside on their own server. And then if you're wondering how exactly could all of this connect, they have APIs that connect e to each other. So the approval workflow may have to go and make a call to the authorization engine, checking to see if a user is authorized. And then it may check for the posts and posts may also communicate with the approval workflow app. All of this happens usually using JSON API based applications. That's kind of a definition of how they could work at a very high level. And I've already gone into some of the benefits of, my, of monolithic applications, but there are also some drawbacks. Maintaining monolithic applications can actually become very challenging, if, especially if they're not developed well. This is mainly doing, due to the fact that monolithic apps have a reputation for 
tightly coupling processes. This means that making a single change can have a domino effect and cause a number of issues in different parts of the code base. While monolithic architecture puts all of the functionality into a single process, microservices break these up into different pieces. So if you build a microservice the right way, then you're not gonna have that same level of coupling and items aren't, or they shouldn't depend on each other the same way that a monolithic application does. So you build all of these various services inside of an entire architecture and each one of these can be tested and developed individually and once the app is up and running the service simply run on separate servers and separate processes all connected to each other. One of the biggest benefits to using microservices is the ability to scale up. You can scale up individual components instead of having to scale up the application as a whole. A good example of a time where I used this was at a microservice-based application and it was with the company that ran very large marketing programs. And there were times where within a day they might get 50,000 signups and that might only be be fitting inside a few hours worth of time. Where this helped is I was able to scale up certain components like the front end and the authorization engine without even having to touch these other ones because they were just like lead generation kind of signups and they didn't have to touch each one of these other components. So it actually saved the company a lot of money because I was able to scale down and scale up the important items that were gonna be related to the work that was gonna be done. So in addition to the scaling side, it also is nice because you can test the various components and isolate any problems quickly and easier. And this allows you to give a more prompt solution. Also, if a component fails, your entire system doesn't have to fail. So if you create your system where each component can function without the other ones, your system won't crash just because one system or one component does. A great example of this would be, let's say that we had a reporting engine as one of the microservice components. If there was a bug in the reporting engine, then, and this was a monolithic application, it would take the entire system down. However, if this part goes down and there's an issue with it, all that should happen is when a post calls the report engine, it should just get a not available or error message, and then you can render something and give the user a little bit better feedback, but you don't have to take down the entire system. So this is a, a great way of being able to isolate and spread out applications, especially ones that are incredibly large. It's very rare that I'll use a microservice-based application for a small system, just because it's a, it does take a lot longer to build and usually takes more resources and therefore costs the client more. However, in certain situations, this can be one of the best approaches. A really nice benefit to this as well is the fact that if you have a spread out team, so you have a remote set of developers, you can actually separate them out. So I could say that Lucy is gonna work on the application workflow application and John is going to work on the reporting engine and Keith is going to work on the posts, and each one of these can almost reside inside of their own world. When I worked and did quite a bit of work for Eventbrite, this was the way that their system was set up. I had one of the microservice applications that they hired me to build out, and that was all that I was responsible for. I just cared about what that one did, and I had to work with incoming and create outgoing API connections and services, then my component focused on the some 
parts of the reservation system. And so I didn't have to worry about everything else in the application. I didn't have to worry about overwriting other users' code or anything like that. I was simply able to focus on the item I had the responsibility for. So depending on, uh, in order to make your decision on which type of system to use, it really comes down to what type of application you need to build, what your timeline is, what the budget is, what your experience is. If you're a brand new developer, then this probably isn't the right fit for you because you have to know quite a bit about how APIs work and how you can connect systems using various services. However, if you do have a little bit of experience under your belt, you're comfortable using APIs, then doing something like this can be a great way of organizing a code base and making a system more scalable. It's all up to you and the project that you need to build.